Hello everyone, um, all three of you if I'm very very lucky. Um, I wanted to do, uh, I needed a distraction to be honest, um, so I took a break and I'm gonna make another video obviously, um, and I'm thinking about doing something um, on regression. I'm not exactly sure how it works out because it's really involved even even simple regression modeling that I've been playing with um, and I can't get into nearly everything but uh, I think it might be interesting um, uh, as a brief overview of what I've seen, what I'm looking at when I talk about modeling or regression or anything else. Um, one thing that we've talked about and seen a lot about recently um, is uh, how combine results do or don't relate to NFL success. Um, I think it's misrepresented or misunderstood in a few different ways. I basically can't find, and I haven't found anyone else, find a strong um, relationship between combine numbers and actual performance in the NFL. Now, obviously athleticism matters, obviously there is some signal there, it has to matter somehow, but I don't think we're measuring athleticism well um, in a combine setting, or we don't know how it relates to uh, an NFL setting. So for example, um, a 40 yard dash time isn't telling us much about how fast a player will run his routes. It seems to make sense that if you run faster in a straight line, you run faster on a field, um, but that's not what's happening. So um, we have to kind of accept that. Now what we can say is we're getting signal because the NFL teams like combine results, right? They like the combine. They like um, that measure, those measurements of athleticism. So it tells us something about opportunity. Um, I don't think we can say definitively one way or the other what is useful or how yet, but it is an interesting area of what people are looking at right now. So I thought we'd take a brief look at regression, regression modeling um, with combine data. So what it is, went to nflcombineresults.com. You can filter by year or just take all years all the way back to 1987 to wide receivers and all colleges. And I literally just copied and pasted just select, copy and paste all of this into a Word document, and I married it to using the sort of method what you saw in the other video when I was using VLOOKUP to the wide receiver database at FS Statistics, and stuffed that all in there, and then I averaged out um, PPR points, uh, and uh, also sorry, um, the average reception percentage, so we can test something of traits just to do a hopefully a quick and simple look at how we can look at combine results relating to traits as well. Um, let's see, what should we look at here? Um, I use uh, player uh, uh, pro football reference and also playerprofiler.com to verify who I was looking at, especially when you're looking at two different databases, you get a lot of two different names, and so you want to check some other variables like the year. Uh, years they played in, or in this case, the, the, the times or metrics they were at the combine that can help distinguish which is Mike Evans from 2005 and which is Mike Evans from 2010. And there's also several Steve Smiths as well, and stuff like that. Um, I saved us all that time on the actual video because it got very tedious watching me use some if and everything else. Um, so hopefully uh, that's enough of a description of where everything comes from. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right. So um, first thing I point out is um, just finding R or R squared. So you might wonder because we talk a lot about height and um, uh, like uh, if a NFL wide receiver is tall enough, how well does height relate to um, PPR points in their first three years that I got from FS Statistics? So the easiest way to do that is just to make a graph, especially in Excel, ask it to make a trend line, double click on the trend line, and it pulls up this little menu, and at the bottom it literally just asks, do you want to know the R squared? And you say yes, yes I would like to know that. Um, and then I usually format, right, just to make it visible or fancy or whatever. But what we're seeing here is there is pretty much no relationship between height and NFL success. Now this is a big sample, the 300, well it's a small sample, but the 387 players in here from 2000, 
and we know players are all different so on a, on a vast majority here we're not expecting especially when we're taking in players that scored literally one fantasy point in their first three years two players that scored over 800 points in their first three years we can narrow down um it uh, uh which players we want to draft better than that anyway but still just um, as red, their height has no direct correlation, like within any kind of reasonable rounding error, um, to the fantasy points they're going to score. We could also do that for other traits and everything else. Um, so, what I also did is uh, double the tab, so I have that one save because we're going to manipulate it a little bit and a lot, um, and it'll run simple regression. So, um, I don't want to lose all that hard work. Um, yes, this is very rough and ready, right? This is not nearly a detailed or fastidious enough database to actually believe any of the results we get very strongly. It's just uh, an example. Uh, okay, so what if we want to know, well, let's look at them um, like the 40 time as well, just so we can get a basic idea of by themselves what they can tell us in terms of PPR points at least. Trend line, give me R squared. And that's even smaller correlation, right? So it doesn't matter how much quicker someone runs than any other player at the combine, there's a very slight um, relationship. So there's almost no chance that running a 4-4 compared to a 4-2 tells you a lot about how many fantasy points they'll score in their first three years. In fact, it tells you nothing by, by itself is the important point. So if you want to start combining things like producing higher adjusted speed score, which actually has a over a 10% correlation to fantasy points, um, or anything else, one way of looking at that is to run a simple regression model. Um, now in Excel, you just have to download what, if you have Excel, you already have this data analysis pack, you just don't know it, you have to go to um, uh, options and then marry it in. You can find other videos about how to do that. <laughs> this isn't really an Excel video, but it just gives you this little data analysis option. Um, and then let's click on that. It says you can do all these different things. We're just going to run a simple regression model. Now what we need is a Y variable and that's what we're going to compare everything to. And I've been using fantasy points so far. So I'm going to keep using fantasy points because that makes it directly relevant to us, right, as fantasy players mostly. So I'm going to include the column heading just because it makes everything clearer later. Um, and if you're selecting from words <laughs> into numbers, um, then you have to click labels. Um, now the X range is literally the things that you want to test. You think these things tell you something about these things, or you think X tells you about Y. And so we think height and 40 time tells us something about um, how many fantasy points a player was going to score, a wide receiver is going to score in their first three years. So you select all of that in the X and the Y columns. Now the other thing to note is you have to get rid of empty cells or fill them with zeros. I've, um, I typically get rid of them, which is why I have to go for a larger sample, uh, as large a sample as possible, because not every player even has a 40 time. Even successful players don't always log a 40 time. They're not all been invited to the combine. Um, that's because I worry that if you just add in zeros, then um, it's, it's it's affecting. He doesn't actually run a zero, right? So saying that he does throws off um, the integrity of the results, let's say. Let's delete those. And go back to data, data analysis, regression. And reinsert these. So the Y is PPR point. The variables we can, you can test up to like, 13 or something is there, and we're using labels, and then click OK, and then wait as it creates its own, so what it's doing, and I'm nowhere near a mathematician, this is all self-thought, is essentially making graphs, where everything comes down to graphs, I find in math, the, the deeper you go, if you stop when you hit the graph, and, and it's trying to find the way those two graphs of 40 time and um, uh, height that we just saw adjust to fantasy points if you compare and buzz together, how it adjusts that trend line. Um, 
So, uh, there's a lot on here, um, and I understand about half of it, half as much as I want to. So R squared is the raw correlation, adjusted R squared is how that R squared that we were making with with the initial graph adjusts once we add both of them together. You should expect, well, not what's expect, I'm not going to talk in definitives here, but what we're seeing is actually a decrease in how well they relate to each other. Um, based on it, it also gives you standard error, so you're getting 195 fantasy points on average, and um, it's predicting those wrong. Uh, and then down here, you've got a whole bunch of other different mathematical points that you really need to read up on if you're interested in doing this at all. One thing um, to look at is the p-values, which is probability, probability values, if you remember studying that in school. Now if you just do a simple 1 minus the p-values, that tells you how significant it is. And typically we don't like anything, or they say not to like anything, um, below 95. So that's 95% significant is how it, it relates to the y variable, in this case PPR points. And about uh, with 95% certainty is actually, I think, the word, um, that it has something or is statistically significant. Um, you can also do a few other simple little things that I've learned, which is like 1 times the coefficients it's giving you, and it tells you how significant it is. So 1, uh, a whole point in height, or a whole inch in height, um, is changing a player's score by 9 fantasy points. So every, for every inch they are taller, whereas every um, 1 second uh, quicker, <laughs> they run the 40-yard um, dash. They're actually, uh, well, they're actually losing um, 189 points off their overall score for every one second longer they take to run the 49 dash. And that just tells you a little bit about how significant it's finding. And um, so height, only adjusting it by nine points when we're typically talking about hundreds, it's not actually adjusting things by height overly. I would say. Um, Everything else in here really needs to be understood to a great degree um, before you start thinking you've perfectly perfected regression and your regression model works. But those are the two things I would definitely check first. Um, you can then use this to um, create an equation, which is actually your regression equation. So you take the intercept. Typically, you don't use any. They say not to use any of them. Um, unless they're over 95. The intercept is at 51, which is not good enough, but we're just going to ignore that because that is also, you know, uh, there's debate about that as well. So, um, you plus the intercept to all of these coefficients uh, times those actual values in order to find your equation. So it's height times 9.46 on 4. So forth, 9.46, 5, 5, 5, and an extra 5, plus uh, the 40 time times minus 189.715. Right? So that's the equation it's creating for you. It's saying if you do that to the metrics per player, it will predict. Um, the fantasy points they will score in their first three years with a standard error of over 195 and it correlates uh, with with an R squared um, and adjusted R squared of just over 1% and an R squared of slightly more than over 1% so this is a terrible regression model right we weren't expecting it to do much but it does kind of highlight exactly how Poorly, the combined stats by themselves can tell you much about what a player is going to do in this first three years. So if we put that back into our table and time and insert the values where before we just had words, and what it's going to do is PPR to predict. That's what the regression model we just ran predicts these players were going to score in PPR points. And then I usually, on the original sample, um, take their actual PPR points away from what it predicts. And that's 
probably where you're getting your standard error from, but you can look at it by player, by class, and actually see how how well it relates or what that um, R squared actually means. So if we go to who have we got from 2014? Those names are all recognizable. Yeah. Um, so what we're seeing here, what I sometimes do with serious regression models and not this play toy here, um, is see by class how far off it was in individual players. So it liked Mike Williams, for example, a lot more than he actually scored, but that's okay because we like Mike Williams, we like Jarvis Landry. Notice that Jarvis Landry was small and had a slow 40 time, but this terrible regression model still projected it for 161 fantasy points. Oh, wait, no, it hated these guys. Sorry, I forgot. I said it backwards. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the guys it liked predicted over 200 fantasy points for people like Matt Hazel, Kevin Norwood, because they had reasonable 40 times or quick 40 times and a lot of height even though height was a very small adjustment, as we know from looking at the summary output. Again, this is not, we already know, right? It told us, like, this doesn't tell you anything. That's what these things say. Um, and you can do that for traits uh, as well as just PPR points, which is why I downloaded those rece re average reception percentage. So what in here do we typically hear he has this score, therefore he will catch the ball well. Um, I suppose maybe height, you know, jump balls, bench press, nothing really. It doesn't have um, hand size for us to consider, which is another bogus thing they usually say. All right, we'll just do it against height, I guess. Uh, so if we take all well. That wouldn't work because we can just run a simple graph for that. And um, how would a height <laughs> reflect the re average receiving reception percentage? Not well at all, you can probably already tell. Already, your experts are looking at these graphs. Alright. Um, so that is slightly more significant, actually, uh, than it was to PPR points. Um, but it's still within any kind of reasonable rounding error. This would, it, it, to make it um, a percentage, you times it by 100, right? So it moves up to, and that's a full 2% <laughs> significant height to how well they are actually catch the ball or their average um, reception percentage, if we can say average reception percentage is how well they catch the ball. Way we'll to test that, see who's the highest in it. Uh, you can really then go back to FS statistics and adjust it by you only want players who have caught so many balls because all these high catch percentage people are going to be people that don't catch a lot at all. And then you get Randall Cobb. So there you go. I don't know if average reception percentage is even a good way of measuring that. So that, that, that was just a loss, but I think that's an overview of how you go about creating a formula uh, from very simple regression analysis. Now, if you choose better variables and I'm more fastidious about the sample than I've been just to do this demonstration, then you can start finding um, uh, actually decent correlations with decent R squares, and then you call that a, um, a regression model, and that's where um, a lot, I think, and certainly all of mine, mine are no more sophisticated than this, but using a better sample and using better variables and testing variables a lot more than I did in this uh, quick uh, quick video um, to see how well they relate, uh, and then cutting out ones that have uh, well, crossover, essentially. But, there's a longer word for it than we're going to try and say because I'll trip over my own tongue and it'll sound bad. So, um, yeah, uh, that's the basics of start to create a regression model. You don't need anything really to start except for free data, 
which is freely available, obviously, and then um, adding this little data analysis tab. And then you, uh, anyone who knows anything about this and watches this video could do backflips being uh, uh, how angry they are about the way I've represented it because there is a lot to understand about all of these things and I like I say I, I'm I'm going to school on it um, but I'm nowhere near an expert yet I'm just playing with it to understand it better when I, when I see the likes of Anthony and Miko uh, or uh, JJ Zacharyson talk about regression or talk about regression models having played with them some helps me understand what those uh, more expert analysts are actually talking about right and that's that's why I would encourage you to try it just to uh, understand it a little better um, which I think doing sometimes explains better than anything else so I'm at 20 minutes now which is probably way too long uh, for any video so anyway um, thanks for checking out if you did and ask me any questions you might have on Twitter or I guess the comments but I really don't I really haven't looked so I don't think I will <laughs> so Twitter's your best bet thanks again